H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Uh, so yeah, if you're able to see my screen right now, so you must be able to see the course that will be following up. So that's Selenium training course that we have to follow up throughout all our sessions, right? So first of all, ne nevertheless, we have to discuss about Java only. First thing that we need to discuss is Java. You see this topic? So we'll be catering each and every person who has knowledge and who doesn't even have knowledge about Java. So we'll be helping each and every person out here because the course is meant for a person who has a knowledge about testing or either if he doesn't have what knowledge about testing also then we'll help him to jump into selenium with java so we'll be telling you concepts about java that are necessary to start your selenium career so usually you know what happens java is a huge language right java is a language that is being used in every backend servers java is a language that is being used a lot as compared to other languages right so it's very 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 vast language but for selenium we don't need to learn each and every concept of java we could limit and learn limited concepts that are only required for doing selenium transactions right because we don't need to learn in detail about each and every concept we just need a little bit java knowledge so that we could start with selenium period and all those java concepts will be catered over here in the training courses so we'll have a one hour class on daily basis in which we'll be discussing about each and every concept that is being displayed out here so i believe the if we go through these concepts the basic concepts i think it is very much enough for you or anyone else to start the basic career in java with selenium so before i proceed for that i think i should show you something some concepts of this java and selenium what exactly we are planning so first we'll go through the java trainings right uh, in which in java training will teach each and every person over here the basic concepts what exactly is covered in java what is java what are different operators what is oops concept because mainly the oops concept needs to be used over here then about selenium we'll learn about selenium what exactly is selenium over here locators different type of locators then we'll have to learn about different annotations so that annotations we'll be seeing using test ng classes that's a later part that we could cover and since we already know about so in this session we have already covered about covered about selenium right so selenium alone is not enough we need to learn more about the frameworks because whenever we work into an industry right they don't ask you hey alan have you worked on the selenium but they'll ask you hey alan which framework were you using or which framework do you have knowledge about so we'll be even giving you knowledge about the different frameworks that could be even asked so there are multiple frameworks that could be even asked in an interview or they might even ask you to work upon so we'll be discussing about different frameworks like page object model page factory keyword driven data driven hybrid there are multiple models that we could be discussing overall then we'll having a build, auto, build automation tool. So, you know, you see Maven. Maven is one of the most important thing that is ever used in developing a project. So, you know what? Building step by step. So, I'll be teaching you first the basic concepts of Java. Then we'll be going to basic concepts of Selenium. Then once we have basic knowledges, knowledge about Selenium and Java, then we'll be combining both of the knowledge to proceed further. So these are all the headings that we'll be catering. So Git Bash is something that is used for sharing the code because whenever you work into an industry, you need to share the code across all your employees. You need to give the access to the code to all the employees. Object repository is something where we keep all the locators. All these Selenium locators are kept out there. Then Logger. So Logger is exactly something that helps anyone to debug the issue. So usually what happens, as a layman, right? I'll tell you. So whenever we go to any any shopping website, let's take Amazon. Okay. Uh, for example, we have went, uh, we have 
bought something on Amazon and paid for that particular um, uh, thing on Amazon with a credit card, right? In the front end, so in the front end, I mean by in the application, I'm just saying that, please wait, we are uh, process, uh, processing your request. Am I right? But in the back end, what exactly is happening? While the developer had put some logs, put some code that would help any backend developer or any backend monitor or any backend person who's monitoring the whole support to understand what exactly is happening in the backend, right? Then Cucumber is another kind of framework that we might use with the Selenium. So that's a simplest framework that I could tell you that uses a simple language that calls Gherkin. That's English-like language. So it, you just you just write over there what do you need to do, how do you need to do, which is the data that you need to use. That's a basic thing that will help you get started with the Selenium carrier. And these are a lot of basics over here. So Selenium, Java framework, automation framework, design patterns, build automation tool, continuous integration. These are all detailed concepts. If I had got this information while I was developing my career, it was good for me. But I didn't have this knowledge. I didn't have these platforms initially because I had to learn each and everything from the help of websites. So yeah, these all concepts you'll be learning about. So Alan, did I answer your question? Uh, yes, Mr. TJ, you did. Uh, thank you so much for full and detailed answer. Now I feel confident that I can go on with the Selenium class and that I uh, didn't make a mistake, you know. Because yesterday, uh, my um, the friend of mine kind of confused me, saying that you don't know Java, do you? I said, no, I don't. He's like, if you don't know Java, how could how come you taking on Selenium? I said, well, tomorrow I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna ask exactly the same question from a tutor, and if I'm on the wrong path, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to Java uh, class as opposed to uh, Selenium. But right now I'm gonna stay uh, since uh, we will get, we'll be covering everything. I'll just tell you one thing over here. So Java classes is good concept that could, you could even join. But you know what? We don't need to learn in depth knowledge about Java. We just need to know the basic in order to start. Because if you'll go for a Java training, it might happen that they'll be teaching you detailed concepts that's required as a Java developer. But you're not applying for a Java developer course, you're applying for a Selenium automation course. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, you are applying for a Selenium automation interview position, right? Right. You want to right. get Selenium interview. So you just need basic knowledge about Java. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. I no Thank you so much. So anyone has any question regarding Java, Selenium, what are we going to teach during the sessions? Okay, I think we are good over there. No one has such questions regarding what are we going to teach. So team, uh, since I'm on this page, let me brief you about the whole thing that we'll be having. So we'll be having one hour classes on each and every day that will help you to clear the concepts. And these classes will continue for 40 hours. So we'll have 40 hours with us to discuss each and every concept. And each day we'll be discussing the doubts. So no matter if you face some issue today, you could come to my class tomorrow and discuss the same. And there's another option that you could reach us out with the email if it's, it's very important. If it can't wait, you could, each also, you could also reach us out using the emails. But we prefer that we resolve the issue in class itself because we could debug the issue in front of the student. So that's much easier for anyone to understand rather than I'll just mail, mail you a solution and you won't be able to understand, right? So what I believe is, if there's something to be discussed, that's better to be discussed in the class because I'll be able to explain it using the code or something, for example, which I won't be able to explain you while an email. So that's my approach that I take upon usually. But yeah, emails are most welcome. No problem in that at all. So these sessions will be continued and after this, you'll be having lifetime access to the whole material. So no problem in that. And we do even have some mock interviews that we do conduct after these sessions. So usually people when the course is over, right? 
you go for the job application, right? You try to go into industry and apply for a job. But at times you face some situations that they might even ask you. So which framework have you worked upon? What were the issues that you were facing? I'll tell you about these things, these concepts, but let's take an example that you forgot about these concepts or you were not able to answer that question, particular question during an interview. So we are there to help you out with these types of kind of questions that could help you to crack the interview because we mainly are here for you so that you could crack your interview and get yourself a job and start working as an automation engineer. So that's a big transformation that will be required from manual tester to a automation engineer. I hope team, I was clear about those ideas that I was trying to discuss. Now shifting back to the slides. So since I heard that someone was not from the testing background, I was ans I was working on some questions over here. That was, why exactly is testing required? So Alan, uh, can I ask you a favor, please? Do you mind? Sure, sure. Since you're from the testing background, can you just uh, brief me or give me a vague idea? Why do we need exactly testing? Why do we need to test something? As far as I understand, we do have to test every application that uh, developers create in order to make sure that requirement, all the require uh, requirements are met. You know. That's so perfect, in, yeah. in 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 another word, all the programs or applications have requirements, and tester is a person who makes sure that requirements with the expected results are equal. That's, that's, the, that's the role of the tester. I have to make sure as a tester that we are um, on the same page with the requirement. So all the requirements are being met. If it's not being met, it means there is a mistake. And mistake in the worlds of the testers uh, being called a bug, so we have to, you know, get rid of the bug. That's the role. I think that was a good definition, Alan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So yeah, Alan explained it very well for us. So just to reiterate it, testing is something that is required. Required to to see if all the requirements are met or not. So what do I mean by requirements? So let's take an example over here. What usually happens into an industry? Whenever a company has a software to develop, right? They don't develop the software randomly. They have a list of requirements. Either that requirement is provided by the client, right? So for whom, whomsoever I'm developing the project, the client has to provide the requirements. And that requirements come in the form of SRS. That's called software requirement specification. Requirements come in the format of SRS. That's called software requirement specification. And each requirement determines what exactly the product should look like. So first of all, we need to test any product to make sure that all the requirements that were mentioned in the SRS document, that's this particular document, are being met properly or not. Next thing that needs to needs to be tested over here is that once the requirements are met, is the functionality working fine? We need to check whether the functionality of the whole product that is being developed for us, is it working fine as per the expectation of the client or not? So testing in a vague manner is something to test or to ensure that whenever a new product has been developed or whenever an existing product has been updated. Okay, just note to these points. It's either for the existing product that has been updated 
or for a new product that has been created. So testing has to be performed in either of the two scenarios. So these are the two, two main scenarios that exist out there in the world. So when there ever there's a product that has already been developed, but some changes were made to the product, right? We need to perform some testing in order to ensure that those new changes have not impacted the application. So if you all are using Amazon application, right? So Amazon application is pushing new code each and every day in midnight at midnight. So Amazon.com pushes the code, the new code of the Amazon application each and every day. Since Amazon is already lying out there in the market, right? People are already using that application. So before pushing any new code into the market, they need to test the current application so that the new code doesn't impact the current application. That's the idea about exist, uh, testing an existing application. And whenever a new product is being launched, right? We need to first of all make sure that all the requirements are met. If the requirements are met, then we need to make sure about the functionality. Where the functionality of the application that was expected is that working fine as per client requirements or not? So testing is something that helps you identify some bugs, as Alan mentioned. So any mistake that is not catering these two requirements, right? Whether the functionality is not working or whether the SRS requirement is not met or the requirement is not met, that will lead to a bug or a defect. Right, so whenever such uh, either of the concept or either of the thing is not met, right, then it leads to either a bug or a defect. So these terms are differently used by different organizations. So there's a problem in that we could use any term over here. So what what is a bug or a defect? If bug or a defect is something that is related to a requirement that a particular requirement was missed by the developer or it was something that uh, the requirement was catered successfully, but the functionality that was delivered or that was implemented was no, not working properly. Let's take an example. I think example is much more better to I, uh, to learn about it. There was a function. Uh, there was a requirement requirement to develop a login button. Okay. So developer has successfully the developer has successfully developed it, okay? So what happened over here? This SRS requirement was successfully met because SRS said that I need to develop a login button. But what happened? This login button that was developed, it's not responding. So when the user is trying to click on this button, it does, nothing happens, right? So user is not able to proceed further or the user is not able to enter the username credentials and password and log in into the application. So what's hap happening over here? SRS was working fine, but this functionality is not working fine. So what will happen? It will lead to bug or a defect. Bug or defect is something when something is missed by the developer or something is not working as per expectations. So then it leads to a bug creation. So Priya Dashini, difference between bug and missing requirement. So I believe bug is something that you would say when the functionality is not working. So login is not responding. That's a bug. Okay. But this this thing, SRS requirement missing, is it's not exactly termed as a bug, but it, it's exactly termed as a what you could say over here in the market as an incident or something. That could be reported in a different manner because we need to identify bug and a requirement mess in different perspective. But it again depends on different company to company. So as per my company, either it's a requirement mess or either it's a functionality mess. We just log a bug. We don't differentiate between them in terms of any terminologies. But yes, the main difference between SR requirement mess and the functionality mess is something I was told to develop a login button, so I developed a login button. That was the requirement. Requirement was catered successfully. But when I was told to implement some functionality, 
I missed that functionality. So that button is not responding anymore. Are you clear, Priyadarshini? Any more examples should I give you? Okay, cool. So yeah, that was a gist that I could explain you about the testing concept. So what exactly is testing? Why do we need testing? So testing was not given much importance in the previous years. So I have even experienced that. Usually what used to happen, if you're having 20 developers into our company, right? So they'll hire only one or two testers. They feel like tester is not required. We don't need tester. We don't need anyone to test the application because they are much more confident about their coding skills. But they don't know since we all are humans, right? And we tend to make mistakes. We never want to make mistakes, but it happens automatically. We don't have any choices, right? At times we do miss something. At times we do, we do forget something. So these all things lead to a bug creation. Testing is one of the four most important job that is out there that helps an application to be released to the market. If any application is not tested properly, then we could even not release that application in the market. Testing was not given much importance in the previous times. So as you all are aware about the manual testing, right? So you must be knowing that how much testing has been given importance too. But now since uh, the market is changing, people are realizing actually what exactly testing is. So I'm not talking about right now this particular year. Yeah, it's been like four to five years. People have started realizing about testing industry. They are now much more concerned about testing rather than development because testing is the one that will either let the product be pass on to the customers a successful product or it will fail the product because it's a tester who could stop the release. It's a tester who could stop the release of any product to the customer, right? So testing is given much utmost importance. And now since we are moving to an automated world, right? So since we are seeing that MI learning, machine learning is the artificial intelligence is coming up. So even the automation testing industries have also been on a boom from a number of years. People are learning Selenium and trying to automate a number of concepts, not only Selenium, but there are a great number of automation tools out there in the market that could be used for automating any kind of stuff. So that's a basic idea about manual testing. Why are we people moving from manual testing to automation testing? Automation testing is the next, next boom, you know? you'll see much more jobs into automation testing as compared to manual testing because they want a person in future who could perform both the jobs together because they don't don't want to hire two persons separate person for the similar job but they want to hire a single person who could even do manual testing and who could even do automation testing as and when required so i believe this uh, this learning for you will be very good since we are learning a way how to transform ourselves into automation testing. I think this learning will be help you over there. So yeah, team, this was something that I could tell you about testing right now. Any doubts, any questions for me till now? Please feel free to, free to ask any question over here because you are paying me for this, right? You, if you have any random question also, if it's a vague question in your mind, do you, if you think it's not an appropriate question, go ahead and ask the question. There's no problem at all. Okay, I think the students out here are pretty clear or Either they're understanding everything or either they're not understanding anything. So let's take the positive side over here. I'll take the positive side that you're understanding everything till now. Okay, so team, now moving to Selenium and Java. So what is Java? Java is basically a language that is used for writing code. A language that is used for writing some code. 
Okay, so why do we need to go with Java language only? Why can't we go with other, another languages? Because you know what? If you have studied about Selenium, so Selenium supports different kind of languages like Java, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, and so on. Multiple languages are supported by Selenium. But why do we need to go with Java? Anyone? It's the most widespread language. That's why. Right. I would say a similar thing. Yeah, it's open source language. Either so, these all languages are also open source. Python is an open source. Ruby is an open source. C sharp is an open source language. But Java is one of the languages that comes to everyone's mind when they start working on Selenium, right? Either you could also go with Python. Python is also a good option these days. But Everyone who start who thinks of learning Selenium or who thinks of exactly mastering in Selenium, they try to do it with Java. But yes, these other languages are also adapting these days. So Python was not that good uh, a few years back, but Python has developed, has grown back. Now Python is also very boom industry. People are required in the industry who has Python knowledge. So that was about Java language. Why do we need to use Java language? What is the use of Java language? So you know everything. Let's take a basic example. Uh, whenever you go to an ATM machine, right? So you all must be going to an ATM machine to withdraw some cash. All those ATM machines, do you know which backend they are using? So mainly those ATM machines are using either the C++ backend or either the Java backend. So all the native machines or all the native uh, systems that you see out there in the market are using Java backends right now because Java is one of the legacy language that I could say over here. It is treated as a legacy language. So it's been used in use for a long while. And since that language is being used for a long while and it's an open source, we have a good community support also. So for Java, we have good community support. If you have any questions, if you face any issues, right? You could just go over the internet and post your questions. In few minutes or few hours, you will get your reply. There are n number of people out there to help you on the different questions that you are having. It's a free community, free support, no charges at all. That's the main thing that I believe people are much more interested towards Python or Java these days. So. Usually I use Selenium with Java or either Python. So I know both the languages. I work with both the languages, whichever project requires. But at a time I work with only one language. But yes, I even work with Java and Python for Selenium. Now Selenium. What is a Selenium? So do you think Selenium is a language? So I would say exactly it's an API but it's a jar file so what is a jar file it's java archive so usually what happens since we have a functionality right we have something developed with us so usually what we do in java in java is we just try to come uh, compress all the functions. So you know what exactly happened. Let me try to explain you with an example. So let's take an example, basic example that I wanted to open a browser. So I have written some functions that would help the user to open a browser. Right? I want to click on a particular item. So I have written certain functions that would help the user to click on a particular item. I had written some functions that would help the user to verify the elements on the screen, right? So that would help users to identify whether the elements are visible or not. So there are different uh, different functions that have been developed by me. So at the end, what exactly I do? So since these are generic functions, right? 
so these functions could be used by any user that is sitting out there in the market or anyone who's working on java so what i'll do i'll just wrap up or i'll just fold them into a small box that is called a jar file and throw it out there in the market so usually whenever we go and download selenium you'll see we are downloading a jar file so we download different jar files that are required for running selenium so those all are java archives and those java archives have different functions that have been developed developed by someone so that those functions could be used by us are you getting the concept or no okay cool pradeshini thank you so collection of all generic functions folded in small box so i'm just trying to explain this in the layman language right now small box right and this box this box box is thrown in the market so this box could be used used by anyone to make could be used by anyone to utilize the functions that were created so you see there was only one person who created these functions but these functions are being used by multiple people out there so this box is called as a jar file so selenium is not language selenium is a collection of different functions that would help you to automate your browser browser could be chrome browser chrome browser firefox okay then safari internet explorer then internet edge so these are the, these are the main browser that i'm talking about there are some more browsers that you could even use could automate but these are the well known renowned browsers right so selenium gives an option to automate these all browsers with the help of selenium jar file so making use of java along with the selenium jar file we could automate different operations that we need to perform onto the browser so that's about selenium did you get why what is java and what is selenium because you know what exactly when i started my career i used to think that selenium is a tool i used to think that selenium is a language but that was a very big mis uh, misconception for me i didn't ever understand the basic logic but yes later on in my experience i realized that, that selenium is not a language it's not a tool but it's a jar file that so that you could use some functionalities that has been developed by someone else So team, yes, that was for something that I could tell you about Selenium and Java. So these all concepts for different browsers, different automations, different things, different functions that are provided by Selenium will be discussed in the coming sessions. So these all things will be discussed in the coming sessions uh, that will be telling us about how these different concepts work. So you know what? With the help of Selenium, we could automate each and everything that happens in the browser. Let's take if you want to log in into gmail account automatically then we just need to write some few scripts or few coding languages sorry not few coding languages but yeah few lines of code that could help you automate that whole login process so you don't need ever to go over there open gmail.com first of all then write a username then write your password tap on login wait for a few seconds and then see your inbox right it takes a while for you so you can just do all this thing with a single click of a button so we'll be discussing how those things could be done over here with the help of selenium and java so we'll be learning much more in the coming sessions once we get our hands on so yes team that was i think that was from my side for today's session that would be good to close i believe so 
but before closing i would ask someone that if someone has any doubts how did you like the session do you, do you have some feedback uh thank you so much for today's session uh mr uh tj i think it's crystal clear uh so far so good so oh, far so cool. good and 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 one thing i wanted to ask uh before moving forward i I did find the way, you know, instruction as to how download into my um, laptop is uh, um, Java and Eclipse, but I was uh, I was gonna wait uh, for our session to begin. Do, do, do you think we're gonna be doing it going forward together? Yeah, sure. So I would suggest that if you want to try at your end, you could try it at your end, but yes, We'll be doing it step by step so that everyone could, could follow and could be on the similar pages. But you what I suggest, it's mm -hmm. better to learn on your own each and everything. That because you know what, when you start debugging, when you start fiddling the Google, when you start uh, using your brain, then you learn much more things rather than I'll be teaching you. So I'll be there to help you with each and everything. But if you have some time to spare, I would suggest just go out there, Google anything, try to learn much more concepts. That will help you to regain that information or have that information in your mind for a longer period of time. <clears throat> Thank you. I understood. Thank you so much. But I'm always there for you, okay? So just Thank for you. it. Thank yeah, you. Uh, so Mirel, uh, the course would be like for 40 hours. So that's 40 days. Uh, each, uh, each day we'll be having one hour session. So that the time timing will be 8 p.m. EST to 9 p.m. EST. So that will be continued for next 40 days. Uh, no problem at all if you miss the classes since we are already recording the sessions. So you'll be shared the link. But it's preferable just try to keep this time slot vacant for yourself so that you could just invest that time in your learning perspective. Just one hour a day. So I think team, that's all from my side for today, I think. Because I don't want to get deep into other concepts because we don't have any time right now to proceed much more further in deep concepts. But yes, I could answer some of your questions if you have. Uh, yes, Mirela, it's from 8 to 9 p.m. So you'll be getting smaller assignments on daily basis. So I'll be giving you some assignments that you could work upon on daily basis. So since I'll be going further with the topics, right, we'll be having some questions. So whatever we learn each and every day, I'll write down some assignments for you. Most probably I'll be sending all the assignments each and every day, but it might even happen that I don't send assignments one day or two day. So I'll combine the assignment for three days together but yes we'll be sending some assignments each and every day and as far as the live projects are concerned so at the end we'll be telling you how to create an end-to-end -end framework but live projects something different that you could work upon our website op uh, offers that opportunity to you that you could work on live projects or just try to work on the real problems uh yes a uh, number of things that we'll have to we'll have to go for the installation processes so I'll be telling you each and everything once we start the course because we would be needing Java and Eclipse. These are the two main things that we'll be requiring. So that would be need, need to install. Uh, yes, Karthika. So the questions that I'll be drafting for these assignments, those questions will be the interview questions. Because if we'll just go through the questions, you'll see these questions will be asked while you are going for an interview process. And at the end, I'll be sharing. So once the sessions are all over, right? Uh, I'll be sharing a list of questions from dif different areas like Java questions, Selenium questions, test ng questions, framework questions. So we have some different bifurcations also that could be helpful for you. But that's at the end because at the starting, you won't be able to understand different concepts.
Mr. TJ, I wanted to ask, how do I have an access to uh, to a demo uh, interview classes? Thank you. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, how do I have an access to a de demo uh, interview classes or something, right? De demo. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so that's usually contacted once the 40 hour sessions are over. So what we do, we exactly try to contact the different students have that that have taken the batches so we usually have this thing occurring once the all 40 classes have been over so you get an email from us that there's a demo interview session happening if you want to join you can join it so i just conducted that day, a demo interview like uh, three days back so people that had already completed their course so they joined that particular demo interview and same will be happening for you all also once we complete the course then that demo interview will be happening. Uh, thank you so much for your answer. I just was reading the uh, website. Um, in your website, as far as I understood, uh, there was written saying that uh, right from the get-go, right from the beginning of my um, course, I'm going to be able to have an access to our uh, demo interviews. That's why I asked. Okay, so that question, yeah, so that question is there on the website right now. So I'll just tell you. So once you get the access, okay, so I think you're able to see my screen, right? Right, right. So these are some interview questions that will be there for you. And along with that, since you're already in a process of doing a batch for automation, right? So there might be some chances that some demo interviews might happen during this while. So if you have some time, then you could join those demo interviews. Those interviews usually happen during uh, 12 p.m. EST. But that happens when we have a student, a batch of 40 students, something like that. Then we usually we conduct those batches. But if you want and if you feel like that, you need something of that. So we could spare one session for that. No problem in that at all. I could even have an extra session for you. I could even give some extra information. No problem in that at all. So once you get the whole S2K Infosys access as a login ID, then you'll be having access to sample resumes, interview questions, and all the material that is required over here for you to learn. No problem, Alan. So yes, team, that was all from my side today. I think now we are good to close. Now we'll meet in the next session whenever it's conducted. We'll get back to you with information. I hope to see you all again in the next coming sessions so that we could learn much more. So just right now in this session, I just told you a brief idea so that I don't get into deep, but yes, a limited information. So you'll get, you'll get the information because right now we're conducting the demo sessions for different people to join the batch, right? So we'll you will you'll get the information. Right, it's on Thursday, what I believe. But everything will be given you over the emails. So don't get attention. You'll be informed much more in a prior manner. Okay, team. So I'll take a stop by over here i need to jump into another session thank you so much team for cooperating with me it was nice working with you today have a nice evening take care bye everyone see you all